bureaucracy and made determined efforts to use the law against them. As a barrister, Costello played a key role in defending the blue shirts in court, but it was his political defence of them here in the Dáil which was to get him into endless trouble. The government was introducing legislation banning the wearing of the blue shirt. Costello's speech attacking that law is one of his best known, which is a shame because it was also one of his most ill-advised. The black shirts were victorious in Italy, and the Hitler shirts were victorious in Germany, as assuredly, in spite of this bill, and in spite of the Public Safety Act, the blue shirts will be victorious in the Irish Free State. Now, comparing your own political party to Nazis and fascists is politically daft. Sean Lamas and other Fianna Fáil speakers pounced on Costello's words, claiming they proved that Fine Gael was fundamentally undemocratic, and those words were to haunt John A. Costello for the rest of his political career. Every election, that, that went round my constituents. That was only a phrase. And at the time it was made anyway, what I meant was, we're going to have free speech through the blue shirts. The excitement over the blue shirts eventually faded, but so did Fine Gael's political prospects. The party spent 16 years in opposition, losing popularity all the time. Costello even lost his seat in the Dáil in 1943, although he won it back the following year. But in 1948, new political excitement was generated by the new Clown the Public to Party, led by the exotic former Chief of Staff of the IRA, Sean McBride. Although the party only won 10 seats, it ate into Fianna Fáil's vote, depriving de Valera of a majority and opening up intriguing possibilities for the other parties. After the election then, it was clear that if all parties concerned joined together, de Valera couldn't fall go. He hadn't got the majority, he hadn't got a clear majority. General Mulcahy initiated the idea of an intermountain government. Fine Gael leader Richard Mulcahy invited the other parties to a meeting in the Dáil. They were keen on the idea of a coalition, but less keen on him leading it, a concern raised by Labour leader Bill Norton. And Norton said, well, we don't have some of the parties who wouldn't like to form a new government under a man who had been uh, so identified with the civil war. If Mulcahy wasn't acceptable, there was one Fine Gael politician the five parties could agree on as a potential Taoiseach. There was only one problem. He really didn't want the job. It was totally out of the blue because he had... Somebody said he had no uh, ambitions to leadership or certainly had no wish for the law was his thing. Jack Costello spelled out his worries in a letter to his son Declan, then recuperating from TB in Switzerland. It was not the financial loss, or even the parting from my life's work as an advocate, that made me fight so hard against acceptance, but a fear amounting almost to terror that I would be a flop as Taoiseach. Costello had real concerns about taking the job, but at a meeting here in Dublin's Mansion House, he came under immense pressure from his colleagues to accept. They made it clear that if he didn't, the new government might not get off the ground. He needed time to think, and the one place he could be sure of getting some peace and quiet was on the golf course. I played golf on the Sunday morning, went out to Port Marnock. It's my old friend. We had a, had a four ball there for 40 years, and we played golf that morning in Port Marnock on the basis that they weren't to mention this during the entire time. I played very good golf that day, but we didn't talk about, uh, about the job. Interesting. Uh, people coming and going, and people were very excited. In the end, he decided to rely on the advice of an old university friend, then Ireland's leading solicitor. Well, I went into Arthur Cox, and Arthur Cox said, if you play with fire, you've got to be burned. And I was burned, and they had to give me a consent that night on a Sunday night in the mansion house. And that's how it was formed. But once the decision was made, Costello entered into his new job with his usual vigour, as can be seen in this rare footage of the new Taoiseach addressing a rally in Strokestown. Despite his new position, Costello retained his essential modesty, as a young party activist discovered to his cost at the 1948 Fine Gael Ardèche in the Mansion House. And as usual, the uh, dance committee and uh, the leading uh, members of the party were here in the room to receive the dignitary, and I, being the little fellow, was given the job of going out to the hall and keeping nicks to let everybody know that the Taoiseach was arriving. And I preceded him in through that door there, and I shouted, ladies and gentlemen, on Taoiseach John A. Costello, and I got a thump in the back from Jack Costello. 
and he sent me flying across the room. He said, cut that out, Richie. I don't want them to hear that. He didn't want to be put on a pedestal. The new government was a very mixed bag, from the Republicans in Clown the Publicta to the traditional supporters of the Commonwealth in Fine Gael. They were united by the desire to get Fianna Fáil out and by Costello's skillful chairmanship. The government's best-known initiative was the Declaration of the Republic, removing de Valera's External Relations Act, which had maintained a tenuous link to the Commonwealth. There was an old music hall played Cinderella when I was young, and the, the ugly sisters were trying to get into the mall, and they were being fired out by uh, a footman. And they'd jump in to over the threshold and be fired out. And they were singing a song called, Now we're in, now we're out, now we're neither in nor out. And that appeared to me to be a perfect illustration of the position that this country was in constitutionally, internationally, under the External Relations Act. And I thought it was a proper thing to get rid of that. Although Costello always claimed the government had agreed with him on this, there's no record in the archives that a formal decision was taken on the matter. The pace was forced by a story in the Sunday Independent, which Costello believed was the result of a leak by Sean McBride. The scoop had a huge public impact. I suppose, to be honest, I was surprised, but I was delighted. I remember coming down the stairs three steps at a time as my father came in from early mass on Sunday and then shouted up the stairs, we're going to be a republic. And I was so delighted I couldn't get down fast enough to read the paper. The Sunday Independent had let the cat out of the bag, while the Taoiseach was out of the country for six weeks, sailing to and from an official visit to Canada. Facing the inevitable questions at a news conference in Ottawa, Costello took the controversial decision to confirm that the government was planning to declare a republic. My father was going to be asked at a press conference whether they were considering it. My father wasn't going to tell a lie. I don't know, I think it cleared the air. My father always hopefully and wrongly thought it would take the gun out of politics. Always said that it helped, it had to be done, and it was good for the country. Costello was always proud of the Declaration of the Republic, although he was heavily criticised for his undiplomatic approach. But it wasn't nearly as controversial as the mother and child crisis. When Health Minister Noel Brown's plans for a free health scheme were opposed by the doctors and the Catholic bishops. Costello was always heavily influenced by the church and he made no apology about it. We didn't merely tend to take that attitude, we took it. And I think it's the correct attitude for any Catholic government. We were bound, in my opinion, I'd do the same again. And the other government would have to do it. But it wasn't as simple as the government taking orders from the hierarchy. Costello was opposed to the health scheme, fearing it would lead to state-controlled medicine. He wanted Brown to reach a compromise with the doctors. And while he was, he resigned when the scheme was blocked, causing a huge public controversy that damaged the government, and especially the Taoiseach. It seemed to be a matter of, of dispute between hierarchy, lay and church, and it was beyond uh, general popular understanding. The government didn't fall because of the mother and child crisis. Costello called an election a couple of months later because he was facing defeat in a vote about the price of milk. He was narrowly beaten for re-election by de Valera. Out of government, Costello remained leader of the opposition, but he also had time to come back here to the courts where he fought one of his most famous cases, defending the leader magazine against poet Patrick Kavanagh, who was furious at an unflattering and uncomfortably accurate profile of him in the magazine. Well, I was only a student at the time. I was a, a final year student in the King. 